Hi, it's Carolyn. I'm here to help you learn how to bake and decorate amazing cakes. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to decorate this line profile cake. And like always, I'm starting with my cake already baked, filled, iced, and it's in the refrigerator waiting to be decorated. I have tons of videos showing you how I do that and that will be linked below. But this line profile, it's pretty popular, but a lot of people just purchase acrylic ones online. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make it out of fondant. And I will also let you know how much I charged for this cake. So let's get started. All right, I want to measure my cake to make sure I print out the profile the correct size. So I go over to my cake in the refrigerator and I see that it is about five and a half inches tall. So I wanna make sure that I print that out five and a half inches tall. So here is the picture and I will link this in the description. And I'm gonna use this clay gun. I will link this below. This is like the second to smallest round disc for it. And I dip my finger in some shortening and lube up the inside. Then I put that brown fondant in the microwave to soften it up. And I'm rolling it into a really long log and filling that with the fondant and screwing on the end. Now this can be an arm workout. If you need your fondant to be really soft to be able to squeeze this out easily. So I'm just pressing down on that top little black button and squeezing that out until I have a really long line of fondant and I just wanna roll it to make sure that there are no imperfections in there. And I'm cutting off the end to make sure I have a nice clean end and I am just putting this on top of the picture. So it can get a little tricky. Do you see how I'm wrapping it around to get the little loop here? I wanna get a little bit of water underneath it so it sticks and it does shift a little bit as you do this. So you just have to work slowly and try to get this to be exactly on top of the picture. You know, there's like no rhyme or reason to it. I'm just following the picture and slowly curving this around. Now this part here kind of comes to a point, so I'm bending it in and then I'm squeezing it to give it a sharper corner, get a little bit of water underneath it where it's touching the other pieces of fondant so it sticks. And again, that's a little sharp edge right here, so I'm bending it and, you know, I'm gonna cut, cut off the excess right here. I'm curling in the end because it, it's like the little nostril there. So I'm just trying to get these pieces in the right position first and then I'll work on perfecting it. So do you see I have another separate piece here. This is a smaller piece of fondant and I'm just wrapping it around the mouth and cutting it to size and just squeezing the ends that need to be a little sharper and cutting off the fondant, getting a little bit of water where it needs to meet and sealing it all together. These small pieces can be a little tricky to work with, so just be patient. Now I'm cutting a tiny piece of fondant, and getting a little bit of water on either end and sticking it down just so it sticks to both the bottom of the nose and the top of the lip. And now I have a separate piece of fondant here. I'm cutting a clean edge, get a little bit of water there where it meets and press that down. And then I'm looping the fondant around where it meets. I'm going to get a little bit of water down and then press that down. So I'm just trying to follow the picture. You can do this with any line profile picture. It doesn't have to be this exact one. And then I'm cutting off the excess. And I put that on a cutting board. And now I'm just taking my Dresden tool and my fingers just to get this all in the right position. I want to let it dry for maybe like 30 minutes to an hour so it can hold its shape before I put it on the cake. So I'm just trying to to use my tools and my fingers to get it to look as much as the picture as it can <laughs> and then I'm going to set it aside to dry. Now I got my cake out of the refrigerator and I'm putting some texture on here so that icing on there is cold and hard and I'm just putting an additional thin layer of icing on there. Grab a piece of food safe plastic, crumble it up in a ball and I'm just twisting the turntable and lifting up that plastic just to get this texture on here. I do have a video where I go into detail on how I do this and I will link that below. And then I need to remove the excess from the top. So do you see how I'm taking the spatula and going into the cake? That way I don't pull the icing away. So I'm scraping it off and then just using a little bit of hot water to smooth it all out. Now I want to find the front of the cake. So what I do is I turn it around to find what looks the most symmetrical and I'm flipping that over and it, it, it's a little tricky but this is why I wanted to let it dry a little bit so it's holding its shape as I'm trying to put it on the cake. Now that texture buttercream is still sticky because I just put that on so this is going to easily stick to it. I have the picture close for reference and I'm just trying to get this in the right position so it looks like the picture. Now if you didn't want to do a textured buttercream you can always try to get a little bit of piping gel on the back of that little line and then stick it to the cake but it's just a little easier with this textured buttercream. It sticks easy 
easier and it can hide a little bit of the imperfections that may happen when you're sticking this on the cake. So I'm just taking my tools and my fingers to make sure I get that in the right position. Let's put that back in the refrigerator. Now I have an edible printer and I have a video showing you how I use my edible printer and I will link that below. But I made this little sign on Canva and I'm using my little tool to get straight edges, flip it upside down, get some piping gel on the back. And that pink fondant is rolled out really thin and I'm just putting this down on top and cutting an even border. And then I'm gonna smooth my cuts and I'm gonna store that in a Ziploc bag until I'm putting ready to put it on the cake. Now I have my flowers here and I clean these, I rinse them in water and I let them sit out on this towel to dry. So whenever you get any flowers, even organic ones like these, you wanna make sure that you rinse them just to remove any pollen, dust or bugs that could be on there. And I will link a blog by Sugar and Sparrow, which is really good and goes into detail on how to prepare flowers to put on a cake. Now I got my cake out of the refrigerator. Again, the icing is cold and hard. I'm not gonna mess it up. I'm cleaning the board with a wet paper towel. That flour is way too big. I can't use that one. So what I like to do is find some flowers. I'm cutting off the excess. I'm filling a drinking straw with some icing and just putting the stem down there, cut off the excess of the straw, and I'm going to sink these down into the cake. So you don't want your stems to go into the cake. That's why I like to put it in a straw. So again, I hold up a flower, get a little icing in the straw, and put the stem into the straw, and then press that down. There's no rhyme or reason. I'm just trying to figure out what looks best. So I didn't like that one flower bunch. I thought it was a little too big, so I removed it and put another one there in its place. And now with roses, I like to remove any petals that don't look that good, turn it upside down, run it through my hands just to open it up a little bit. And I'm not ready to put that on the cake yet, so I'm just gonna set that aside. And I'm just doing the same thing. So I hold up that little daisy. I don't need to put a straw underneath it, so I cut the stem off and just got a little bit of icing underneath. But then continuing the process with the rest of these flowers, filling the straw with some icing, cutting off the excess, and then sinking these all down into the cake. So I like to kind of hold up the flower first and and see if I like it where it is and then put the flowers and the straws and into the cake. So I'm just trying to figure this out as I go along, trying to find the best spot for all of these flowers. So I'm keeping everything towards the right side of the cake and I'm having them a little bit taller as they go towards the back. And that, the straw was sticking out there, so I removed the flour and pressed the straw down into the cake. Now I wanted to get some on the sides of the cake too. Do you see how I'm angling that down into the cake? I'm not just sticking it straight in, I'm angling it down. So it's important to have these flowers in the correct position so they're not just vertical or horizontally stuck into the cake. It gives them a little bit more motion and visual interest. And then once I have all the flowers in there, I'm just filling these little holes with a little bit of icing. I don't like that leaf there, so I just cut it off. I'm just taking a palette knife and smoothing everything out so it looks nice and pretty. And now I want to put this sign on here, and it's too big. I don't like the way that it looks. I couldn't figure out where to put it. So what I did, I just made another one that was like shorter and a little longer so it could fit on the board. It got a little bit of icing underneath it and stuck that down. And here is the cake. How beautiful is this? So there you go, how pretty is this cake? And it is a pretty simple design. The most challenging part is trying to get that fondant line to stay in the correct position. But using that textured buttercream really does make it a lot easier when you're putting that on the side of the cake. That way you can shift it around and get it in the correct position without really making the icing look like it's messed up because there's already texture in the buttercream. But like I said in the video, you can always do it on a plain ice cake, get a little bit of piping gel on the back before you press it against the side of the cake. Now this cake on the inside is a three layer, not torted six inch. I have a video where I talk about when I tort and when I don't tort my cakes and I will link that below. It feeds about 16 to 20 people and this one was $200. So I think that's it. What new techniques did you learn in this video? I would love to know, leave it in the comments below. And just a reminder, I have eBooks with all of the recipes that I use. I have my signature scratch pound cake recipes, my best doctored cake mix recipes, all of my buttercream icing and filling recipes, along with my favorite numbers and my favorite fonts. So those will be all linked below. And I do have a Cake Academy membership program where I can help you elevate your cakes to the next level. All of that information is in the description. Please like this video if you liked it, and if you're enjoying my tutorials, I would be so grateful if you could buy me a coffee. My link is down below. 
And I would love it if you would keep in touch on socials and you could check out my website. And if you want to stick around so you can watch this video next and hit subscribe and the bell if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching. I love you guys. Remember, it's cake. Have fun. I will see you on the next one.